The most wonderful time of the year. So naturally, companies want to cash in on it with crappy video games. Christmas-themed media can be the gateway to big bucks if handled properly. Christmas movies are repeated every year without fail. Christmas books are reprinted again and again. And Noddy Holder hasn't even looked at his pension since 1973. But one area of entertainment in which Christmas doesn't always mean cash is video games. While Christmas levels and expansion packs can go down well, very few Christmas-specific games have gone on to achieve success. Of course, we could traipse through the internet and dig out some of the actually good ones, but who cares about them? We thought we'd save ourselves the work and talk about the worst Christmas games instead. Lord knows there have been a lot of those over the years, and it's always much more fun to poke around the naughty list. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst Christmas video games of all time. Number 10. The Grinch 2000 PlayStation Based on the Jim Carrey vehicle released that same year, The Grinch for the PS1 isn't the worst game you'll ever play, but considering that it was inspired by an absolute Christmas classic, it could have been a lot better. In this platformer, you play as the fluffy green menace himself, recovering lost blueprints, playing pranks, and destroying Christmas presents. There's nothing quite like ruining the dreams of children to really get you into that festive mood. Of course, when the Grinch does it, it's amusing, but when I do it, I'm escorted from the building. God, what a double standard. The game did okay with critics, with the highest score actually going to the Game Boy Color version, but they also derided its lack of focus and its limited gameplay. When the most common word across reviews for a game is bored or frustrated, then you know something has gone wrong. While this title didn't quite steal Christmas, it certainly stole several hours that many kids are never gonna get back. Number 9. Terror in Christmas Town, 1995 PC. Have you ever looked at iconic first-person shooter Doom and thought, oh, this game could really do with being a bit more Christmassy? Well, look no further, as I bring you 1995's Terror in Christmas Town. Made using the famously accessible Pie in the Sky game engine, Terror in Christmas Town tasks you with saving Santa Claus from the clutches of a ravenous polar bear. And because blasting enemies into a cloud of blood and viscera isn't the most festive thing in the world, your weapons instead transform your foes into living snowmen. Ugh, come to think of it, that might be a fate worse than death. I've seen the movie Jack Frost. Michael Keaton did not look like he was having a good time. As Doom clones go, this one is pretty bland. The premise has something to it, but the gameplay offers little more than running around boring environments and shooting at things. The fact that the game has no music and very few sound effects doesn't help things either. It's not terrible, but Terror in Christmas Town simply reeks of we have doom at home, and it makes you wonder why anyone kept playing it once the initial novelty wore off. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Nobody did keep playing it. Number 8. The Santa Claus 3 The Escape Clause 2006 Game Boy Advance now before you at us in the comments, we know we haven't spelled Santa Claus correctly. We're copying the title of The Santa Claus with an E series of films starring Tim Allen as a man who ends up taking on the role of Father Christmas because he murders the previous ones? I'm sorry, what? Harrowing premise aside, the movies are actually alright. Well, apart from the last one, which just so happens to be the only one that got a video game adaptation. <laughs> what are the chances? The Santa Claus 3 The Escape Clause was released in 2006 for the Game Boy Advance, and, well, it's a bog standard collectathon where the main goal is to defeat Jack Frost, no, not that one, by collecting milk and cookies. Right. All in all, the game is far too long, far too boring, and far too crap to be considered anything but a festive flop. But don't criticize it too loudly, otherwise Tim Allen might come and push you off a roof. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. I didn't mean to upset you. Please have some milk and cookies and calm yourself down. <laughs> Number seven, Official Father Christmas, 1989, Commodore 64. 
Official Father Christmas is on this list for two reasons. One, the fact that the word official is in its title means absolutely nothing. It was just a ploy to capitalize on the growing success of 8-bit Christmas games. And two, look at Santa's face. That image is now burned onto the inside of my eyelids for the rest of time. As well as traumatizing an entire generation of gamers, Official Father Christmas also annoyed them, as this game is very tedious to play. The first level in which you collect missing pieces of Santa's sleigh is bafflingly difficult, as you are constantly thwarted by some irritating elves. I, I thought you lot were supposed to be on my side! It doesn't get much better from here either, as players then have to catch falling presents before flying tediously through the air. You ultimately drop them off to children, who must have been better behaved than you were, because they aren't getting copies of this game. Naturally, official Father Christmas was limited by the technologies of the time, and to compare it to modern day Christmas games is completely unfair. However, even by the standards of the late 80s, this is a cheap, lazy cash-in that should have fated everyone involved in its creation to a visit from the Krampus. Number 6. Elf the Movie 2004 – Game Boy Advance one of the greatest holiday flicks of all time is what concludes our trilogy of popular noughties Christmas movies that made terrible video games. We're still working on the title. We won't waste much breath explaining the plot of Elf to you. If you haven't seen it, then you are quite frankly a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <sighs> But what does need explaining is how a film so full of life was turned into this drab, dreary experience. Released for the Game Boy Advance almost an entire year after the film came out, the rather unhelpfully titled Elf the Movie, which is a video game, not a movie, sees you pilot Buddy the Elf through the main plot of the film. Unfortunately, that film's charm, wit, and warmth do not translate to this game, with one outlet claiming that it will lower your IQ if you play it. I don't think this can be proven scientifically, oh, unless we pin James down and hook him up to a brain scanner, or oh, check back with us in a few weeks' time, actually. But it certainly is true that this game is good for little more than stinking up your holiday stocking. Thank God the film exists, eh? At least that's good. <laughs> Number 5. Christmas Country, 1996, CDI. I sometimes feel bad for the Philips CDI. <laughs> no, wait, no, no, I don't. It was, it was terrible. Despite its US run being about as successful as cooking Christmas dinner over an LED light, Philips' doomed console had much better luck in the Netherlands. As a result, Dutch company Creative Multimedia decided to cash in on the Christmas market with Christmas Country in 1996. Sadly, it's not a game about a nation in which Brussels sprouts are the currency and the president is a reindeer. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wacky? No, Christmas Country is basically Super Mario, but with Santa Claus instead of a tradesman. Still, both of them are chubby guys in red with notable facial hair, so who's really going to know the difference? It's hard to be too nasty about this game, considering it was allegedly developed in just three months, but Christmas Country is just another example of a classic video game being given a snowy reskin. And once again, this game has no music. I mean, how hard is it to stick some stock tunes into the background, guys? Even my granny knows you need music in video games. Needless to say, she thinks Christmas Country is complete pants too. Number 4. Attack of the Mutant Artificial Trees, 2004, PC Whether or not it's one of the worst may heavily depend on your personal ethics, but there's no denying Attack of the Mutant Artificial Trees is one of the strangest Christmas video games ever made. This free-to-play online game was brought out by the National Christmas Tree Association, which is now incidentally my dream organization to work for. It was designed to promote the sale of natural Christmas trees over fake ones, and prompted players to pelt mutant artificial Christmas trees with snowballs while avoiding adorable little elves. It's an incredibly simple game, as you might expect, but a surprisingly controversial one. Artificial tree dealers took offence to this game's existence, claiming that the association's tactics were far from warm and fuzzy. Whatever your views are on artificial trees, though, there's no denying that this game is far from entertaining. 
It's an amusing and deeply strange footnote, but that's about it. I mean, you throw snowballs at trees, and then you do it some more. If it weren't for the controversy, it wouldn't be worth discussing at all. And even with the controversy, it's probably worth quickly moving on. Number 3. Santa Claus Saves the Earth 2002 PlayStation and Game Boy Advance Arguably the most infamous Christmas-themed video game ever made, Santa Claus Saves the Earth pits jolly old Saint Nick against the evil witch Nilum. No, I have no idea why she's called that either. You'll control Santa as he traverses baffling level designs, blunders aimlessly over bland backdrops, and wonders who he missed off the nice list to deserve treatment like this. And maybe my past comments about the lack of music are coming back to bite me, because the soundtrack of this game makes me yearn for a silent night. Just about everything in Santa Claus Saves the Earth absolutely reeks. From the mindless gameplay to the brutal lack of checkpoints to the confusing objectives, it seems like nothing here was designed to allow players to have anything resembling a good time. The worst part is that the Christmas elements aren't really necessary at all. You could cast any well-known character into the main role, and this game would still have been classed as a crime against humanity. Why do they feel the need to drag poor old innocent Santa into all of this? The game is just as bad as you've heard it is, so please do your bit to save the Earth yourself by never ever engaging with this Christmas clangor. Number 2. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer 2010 Wii in their review of this game, IGN wrote that you could finish the so-called story mode in 10 minutes. And that isn't hyperbole, you can literally complete this game in less time than it's taken you to watch this video. Just, just think about that. A collection of four whole mini-games, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer features such exciting tasks as putting presents under a tree, baking cookies, and painting toys. Oh, stop it! It's just too much fun! The worst thing about this game, though, isn't the simplistic gameplay, nor is it the out-of-focus graphics. It's the fact that this party game only has room for two players. A party game on the Wii, one of the most family-friendly consoles of all time, didn't even have enough room for you and both of your parents to play together, let alone any weird family members who've come over for Christmas Day. Although, come to think of it, that might be a blessing in disguise. Uncle Fred always has really dirty fingernails. All in all, this game is not just a joke, it's a Christmas cracker joke. It's short, it's unfunny, and it's a total waste of everyone's time. And number 1, Elf Bowling 2005 DS and Game Boy Advance. Whichever way you look at it, Elf Bowling is totally mind-boggling. The original game was released on PCs in 1998, but the first two titles were packaged into one bundle for the DS and Game Boy Advance in 2005. I say first two because there are a whopping eight elf bowling installments. Eight games in which all you do is chuck an elf at some other elves. The game is too boring for adults, too raunchy for kids, yes, those are several elf butt cracks you're seeing right now, and yet somehow this series got eight games and a film adaptation. I mean, how do you make this into a film? Why do you make this into a film? Suffice it to say, both the film and game were torn to shreds by the critics. The DS version sits at just 12% on Metacritic, making it one of the lowest rated games on the entire site, Christmas or otherwise. Elf Bowling pitches itself at totally the wrong audience, and it's a miracle anyone ever bought it at all, let alone returned for the sequels. As one of the worst of all time, Elf Bowling tarnishes the names of video games and Christmas in one fell swoop. I would make some sort of bowling pun to end this list on, but honestly, just thinking about Elf Bowling has me going spare. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, happy ending after all.